Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Hezekiah Walker. Yo. How was your weekend, sir? Bro, I almost got a free flight to Antigua. Almost got a free flight to Antigua? Yeah. Oh, shit, what happened? Break it down for me. <laughs> nah, did he hit me? He was like, yo, you get it? We going to Antigua real quick for... Spring break. For Yeah, for spring break. Spring break. Or maybe forever. And uh, and he was like, yo, do you want to come with? And I was like, nah, man, we got to do the pods and shit this year. What's up with him? Why was he going to Antigua? Spring break? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. It really was spring break. You know, when that, when that news first broke... Is he a big spring break fan? But listen, when that news first broke, I said I said that, right? We, we were texting in a group chat, and I was like, I mean, guys, it is spring break, right? I literally said that, but then come to find out, he was what at was the that, airport what? with his family. Oh, wow. Well, no, his family's getting rested, I thought. No, he's got, I mean, he's got more than one kid. He's, he was at the airport with his daughters and stuff, yeah, yeah. and they got stopped, and um, one of his guys got arrested for drugs. I'll tell you one thing, though. That, the Diddy situation is an interesting situation because... Because he hired a white drug mule? But that's language, right? Like, that's that's legal jargon. I love it. Drug mule? You could turn anything. The guy gets you a nickel bag. That's what I'm drug saying. Mule. You a drug mule? I guess. They already no. found his college highlights. That's what I, The kid could hoop. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. That's the, the internet is amazing, bro. From basketball to eight balls? <laughs> He's good. What the fuck? He's good. He's <laughs> Really? Former Syracuse basketball player arrested, accused of being drug mule. Get the fuck out Come of here. Come on, son. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Where was the drugs, though? Did he have them up his ass? Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm <laughs> asking. <laughs> I mean, can this case get any stranger? No, but the, apparently, I mean, I thought you knew that he did do that. Do what? Diddy would request that he carry them up his ass, <laughs> and then he would remove them. <laughs> and he was like, he goes, and he would tell him, he's like, I'm not even going international. He's like, I don't care. I want you to put them up your ass before you get home, and then I'll take them out. Allegedly. This, this, this is. Allegedly. I'm going to be honest with you, man. When I, <laughs> Can you be honest with me, please? This shit is sad. Wait, 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 what? The whole situation saddens me. Okay. Like, it really saddens me. And the reason it saddens me is because, like, at, it, it, you, you got to be honest with yourself when it comes to these situations. We're talking about a person who contributed so much to culture. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about a person who helped provide soundtracks to our lives. You're talking mm. about a person, you know, especially you being from New York City, you know, you had to be inspired by Sean Combs in some way, shape, or form. Like, you know, like... We grew up watching, like, Making the Band. He was, like, one of the first moguls that so many of us saw. So when I see shit like this, the shit is sad. Because it's just like, yo, why do people always got to crash and burn? Like, always. Like, 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 I don't like seeing another legacy go up in smoke. Now, listen, you, you do the crime, you know, you got to be held accountable. Like, that's just the reality what of the situation. What is the crime? What I don't the, know. The, now we, that's what I keep trying to figure out. I almost don't want to know exactly what it is because then I can get these jokes off and feel no guilt. <laughs> Once we find out there's, like, little kids on an island, then I'm going to be like, but see, ah, No, but see, that's the thing. Talk to me. People throw around words like sex trafficking and everything. Pull up the definition of sex trafficking. Pull up the definition of sex trafficking. You fly a hooker from city to city. Exactly. So they could be just well-paid hookers. Exactly. But it's illegal to be a hooker. That's my but point. But sex trafficking in our minds is like they Larry just Epstein. taking fucking... To Larry. What's his name? What the fuck is his name? <laughs> Juan? No, not Juan. What the fuck Stop. was his name? Stop it now. <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> Stop it now. What was his name? <laughs> Stop it now. What the fuck was his name? <laughs> I really Jeff, can't remember. Jeff Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. Larry yes. Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what the fucking name was. Yeah. But, but look at say, what is the exact definition of sex trafficking? Make this bigger, Taylor. Sex trafficking is the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, obtaining, patronizing, or soliciting a person for the, for the purpose. purpose of commercial sexual act, which a commercial act is induced by force, by force fraud, or coercion, yeah. or in which the person induced to perform such an act has not attained 18 years. Okay, force, fraud, or coercion. So, for example, you fly somebody over, yo, we're just going to party, and then it's like, yo, actually, we need a fuck. Yeah. And are, are everybody's on drugs, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know? And if you, if you remember what they were saying in the initial cases, they were saying the freak-offs. The freak-offs were they were hiring prostitutes, hiring male prostitutes. To fuck the girls, and they would watch. That's what I'm and saying. Jerk off to them. That is, that is trafficking. I always if, thought sex trafficking involved 
minors. Because like, people are stupid. And people don't thing. read. They what? can. It can also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, the definition the is broader things. than we think. It's, look, it's right here. Look, look. It's, it's about five different versions. Yeah, you have labor trafficking, things. sex trafficking, child trafficking, bonded labor, right. forced marriage, organ so trafficking. Let's, let's say it's some. if it's not some wild shit. First of all, if... Why are the feds going to all three homes with fucking Hummers and shit? Like, I don't know. If, Why if, they got military style equipment on? Why they got the guns drawn? Why? Because he was hiring three male hookers, hard dicks coming out there. <laughs> you need to have some protection. Imagine you bust out of the door, it's three dudes with hard allegedly. dicks. Allegedly. Just alleged sex mules that, 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 that Diddy oh got there. God. And they got to be hard all day. Man, somebody, listen, listen, somebody texted me this earlier, right? <laughs> I understand that. I'm right, like, I'm coming no, in with the no, SWAT no. gear. <laughs> so when I was, uh, I want the shield in case they start nothing. <laughs> when I was a court officer, whenever there was like um, a prisoner who was trying to fight back, it was the only excuse when we got to war, like the tactical shit. So you're like, yo, like, gear <laughs> so up. We would go in like gear up. OD. Like just when you because, was what? What you used to do? When I was a bailiff, court officer. You was a bailiff? Yes. You Why know the fuck I don't know this? You knew he was a bailiff? I know. <laughs> he was Ross from Night Court? Yeah. <laughs> I did not know this, Alex. Yeah. You was a bailiff? Yes. You I older did. than you be saying, yo. This I'm guy, 64 years old. It gotta be. <laughs> you didn't know Alex Him and Miles Jones be lying. He has 17 lies, bro. They got all these lies, but I'm 30. I was like, I was a nurse. Here. I was in the military. <laughs> I was a bailiff. Bailiff is a peculiar job. Very peculiar job. <laughs> Somebody hit me earlier. And what by the way, say? all of these stuff is going around, right? You've seen this all on the internet. Somebody said, I got a male gigolo hit me up. And he was a, he, with receipts that he was a hired hand by Diddy and others to service females. We doing a blind item on him. He's trying to come on the podcast. This is crazy. Then he's like, these dudes going to hell. I'm like, bro. Why would they I, admit that they did it? Listen, I, go, I don't think they going to hell for being freaky ass motherfuckers, man. No, I'm saying the gigolos... If they're attention, if I, at this point, you don't even know if these people are telling the truth. Yeah, because they just they know if I say this, I'll get a podcast interview or so somebody will bring idea? me on a platform. So he stored half a dozen gigolos in one of his homes, and they're just there at all times, <laughs> ready to fuck. Like if he comes, <laughs> I'm just saying that's what I'm getting from watching this video. This shit is there are six up, gigolos, and their dicks need to be hard the second he shows up with <laughs> pussy, and then a freak off got to happen. Imagine the pressure of that. You're just popping Viagra's all day. I mean, that's day. your job if you're, if you're a fucking gigolo. Yeah, but you just you're not a hired hand, you're a hired cock. Jesus Christ. That's pressure. A cock for hire is crazy. That's pressure. Yeah, I don't want that kind of pressure. I don't want to be a cock. You girls for hire. are lucky, man. Think yeah. about how lucky it is. If you're yeah, hired no, vagina. No, they're not lucky. They're hired not. vagina is easier than hired cock. But. Oh, you mean oh, you mean like the pro- you talking about the prostitute aspect of it? I'm just saying, getting oh, your you, dick you, hard. You, you. you don't know what's walking in that door. He could bring anything in that door. Yeah, but I mean, what, what the fuck is this? That's what I'm talking about. They they back him out. This is the raid. This is Diddy. Yes, Ray? Yeah. bro. They arresting whites. They was arresting whites. This is too much. This is, it is too much. Like, unless they know something that we don't fucking know. Thank you. But then I also too, I wonder how much the internet plays into this type of shit. I wonder if. You know, these people are online and watching these YouTube videos and buying into these conspiracy theories mm. and they're getting phone calls and anonymous tips and probably a bunch of anonymous tips because of what the Internet is fueling. I wonder if that's causing people to, you know, to react like this, because this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. This is this is a fucking raid. Like, I'm like, well, what the fuck is going on? I don't know, man. I just don't like it. I, mean, I, don't, I don't like it just because it's sad. Like, you know, how many how many people's legacies have we watched burn to the ground? You know, from the Russell Simmons, from, you know, But it's Diddy. good that they burned to the yeah. ground if they did fuck shit. Sure, but it's... You, 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 You're you, still so, sad so it's that just they one emotion? Shit. Like, y'all all lying to yourself if y'all saying, yeah, good for them, fuck them. These guys fucking provided the soundtrack to our lives. They contributed to culture in real ways. Before we knew any of this shit, from the Harvey Weinsteins to whoever, we all were inspired by them if you were in entertainment because you wanted to build what they built. They have a room with You're a liar. Guys. Who do you love? Who do you love, Taylor? With who do you like? Right. Just in general. Who inspires you? Megan Issa the Stallion. Ray. Who? Issa Rae. So if, 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 God, if God forbid some bullshit like this, you find out Issa Rae was in the shit like this, I'll that wouldn't be- hurt your feelings? I'm not saying it wouldn't hurt. Okay then, so I don't know why. So that's why I don't understand when people are so quick to be like, no, fuck that. You no, you have feeling, you have mixed emotions. After that whole Cassie thing, you don't know what triggered that from other people though. Like say someone else had that. I understand all of that. I'm taking all of that into consideration. I'm taking the victims into consideration. I'm taking what's going on with them in the uh, the the, the Diddy and all them. It's mixed emotions. It's like OJ. 
No, I never felt like that about OJ. Wait, what? I mean, I didn't grow up on OJ though, so I mean, I didn't feel like that. Oh yeah, me neither. Yeah, I didn't grow up. So I didn't feel like OJ. that. It's not OJ. It's like Harvey Weinstein. Like you saw Shakespeare in Love, and you're like, this guy, wow, he made this movie. To me, it's like Bill Cosby. That's another uh, one. That's another one. Uh, Bill Cosby. Yes. Bill Cosby hurt my feelings a lot. That's, a, that's but that's what I'm saying. Who can? Yo, anybody, anybody saying otherwise, they're lying, or they just not, never had a connection to these people in regards to culture ever. Okay. You're not gonna sit here and tell me that you look at the Russell Simmons. And by the way, I'm not even going to put Harvey Weinstein in there because I didn't feel like that about Harvey Weinstein. I'm lying. But the Russell Simmons, the Bill Diddy. Cosby's, the Diddy's, you're lying if you don't. It's the same thing when I see Kanye, even though Kanye's situation doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with, you know, sexual abuse or anything like that. It's just like, yo, you hate seeing people burn their fucking legacies to the ground. Yeah. Especially when it's allegedly self-inflicted. Yeah. When it's just shit that they could have just not done. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Am I tripping? No, I, I get what you're saying. Some people are, 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 are probably interpreting this as if you have a lack of compassion for the, the victims. I 100%. I but, have compassion for it all. Well, also, right now, we don't know of any victims. Oh, no, we do. Right now, there's not a single victim. We know some shit went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah. legally, like oh, just how, got you. I get just how like yeah, OJ is legally you. innocent. I got you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, and nah, nah, like you right. said, we're gonna have every gigolo from around the block coming out, and be like, you're yo, right. I used to fuck for Diddy. That you're might right. be a badge of honor for a jig. You're right. I mean, I know it's. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so if crazy. you're a jig back in the day and you used to fuck for Diddy, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Imagine you got that call <laughs> at 5:46 in the morning, <laughs> crack, crack of dawn. Now I'm wipe yawning. the cold from wipe my the eye. Cold out my See eye. who's this page of me and why? It's my, it's my man Puff, and he wants some stuff. And he wants some stuff. Told me that he, <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to do the stuff in. <laughs> Yo, that's the call that was coming in. That's the call that was coming in. Why would Puff page you at that hour if he didn't have a need for dick? Nah, don't put, don't, don't put that biggie in there. Man. Yeah, this is all alleged. It's, it's, you heard. Biggie's no, lyrics. No, no, that was no, not, no, but it was not. Puff You've that, heard that, that the wasn't lyrics. Puff Page. That wasn't Puff Page in him. Yeah. See who's this page of me and why? It's my pop from the barbershop told me he was in the gambling spot and heard the intricate plot. See, you got to rework the joke. It wasn't uh, even Puff. They wanted to like <laughs> five paper. paper. Hold on, love, please chill. Drop the cable. Yeah, it wasn't Puff. Nah, I was Puff. <laughs> call him Pop. He used to fuck exactly. for Puff. Yo, if you used to fuck for Puff, DM the pod. <laughs> it's not. Yo, nah. DM Alex. Nah. By the way, you used to Andrew. fuck for the puff. If you used way, to fuck for puff, DM you about, Alex. You about to get like 300 fucking emails and you're not even gonna know if these people are real. There is a way to know. How? Send your cock to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Send your cock and Alex will be able to know if you used to fuck for puff. No. That's do that. bro. Can you put that as a credit? I'm Coming a, to the stage. I, I'm telling you, though, man, <laughs> the, the, minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says it best. When you see situations like this, don't laugh, learn. Because I just don't understand what causes... Charlotte, we got to laugh a little bit. If no, no, I'm... Fuck I get, for Puff on a regular? I mean, the, the story sounds insane. It's hilarious, right? We invented this part. What do you mean? The idea that there's six male gigolos in a basement somewhere, just hard dicks waiting to fuck for Puff. We don't know. We don't know nothing. You think there's six <laughs> rabid I'm just saying we don't know. Jiggles? We don't know why this happened. We don't know why this raid went down. We have no idea. I don't know what the fuck's going Is on. Is there a door they opened and they close it immediately? They're like, I don't even know what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they got doggy bowls in there. They're eating out of doggy bowls. They are hungry. I they thought, are hungry. Did you see the conspiracy theory that this wasn't about... Uh, F uh, finding anything. It was about going there and destroying evidence Ooh. to protect the higher elites. Did you see that one? Puffy's part of the elites now. I mean... Or is he going to take the uh, fall? A lot of people have partied with Puff. Yeah. That's facts. Yeah. A yeah. lot of people have partied and with Puff. And they say he has cameras all around his, all around his place and well, his room and stuff like that. Well... Well, I don't like none of it, man. Once again, I don't care what y'all say, man. You're lying to yourself if you if you act like all of a sudden you didn't have no, you know, emotional connection to Bad Boy Records. If you didn't no, have, we did like, have an emotional. Like connection, you're you're, you're lying to yourself. Like you're lying to yourself if you act like this stuff don't sadden you. Like when I when I'm hearing things like like yes, last year was the 50th anniversary of hip hop, but this year is the 40th year of Def Jam, and people can't even do anything. Well, they, they want to do things and they're going to do things, but Russell can't be involved. That don't that don't like God damn, yo. I think this is the Shit. 
I think this is the thing where like No, it ain't no uh No 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 It's no. mixed emo it's mixed emotions, is, you're it, lying. This is the thing. This is the thing. Nobody's emotions are just that cut and dry. No, but this is where you find out if people are connected to the music or the man. Yeah. Like there are certain people where like this happens to what's that? Chris Brown, for example. Like, nah, meaning like this is different with these guys. Well, I guess I guess what I would say is that like there are certain people where they're really connected to the person. And when something happens to the person, they're like, oh, this is a tragedy. This is fucked up. I hate that this happened. This person I admired so much and loved so much, I no longer can do that. I feel like I've lost something. And then there's other people where, like, he's connected to the music, but we don't really associate the movie music with Puff. We associate with the artist. So, so I don't I know. feel guilty listening to the music. As a, as a person who, who's... But you're really invested in the game. You understand it. Yeah, I'm, as a person who's, who's always wanted to be a mogul, right? There's certain people that you look at. Right. On the come up. Right. And Russell Simmons, Diddy, those guys are absolutely in that space. Totally. So it's not about being really connected to the people. It's being connected to the story. Because you can't tell the totality of Def Jam without talking about Russell Simmons. You can't 100%. tell the story about Bad Boy, Sean John, sure, sure. Ciroc, all of that stuff without talking about Diddy. And I think all the people that looked up to Diddy in that way are sad about this. You got to be. You're saddened. You're disappointed. Yeah. You're like, damn, yo. But I think there's Why a lot of... Why you always got to be one of us that burns their fucking legacy to the ground? And not saying why it does happen to white people too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I can only speak for you me. You guys just started burning your shit down. We did. You right. You've been burning you're right. it down for you're fucking right. centuries. You're right. that, but y'all but have had more opportunity to burn shit down. Yeah, well, welcome to the club. We don't even get these... It's just like, it's just weird, man. It's it takes like, a psychopath to get that successful. And then I don't believe that. I can't believe that either, Schultz. Let's talk about that. Mm. I can't believe it's, that. Yeah. An undeniable, unquenchable thirst and lust for power exhibits itself in many different ways. One of the ways that it exhibits itself is by creating incredibly successful and powerful companies. Obviously, Puffy did that. Innovating business, investing in music videos that blew people's fucking minds and pushed the art, pushed mm -hmm. the genre. It was incredible. But if he does have that desire for power, that also exhibits itself in other ways in other places. What, what it manifests it itself potentially sexually. And then you see some pretty gnarly things happen that maybe me and you would be like, I would never pay four gigolos that live in a room together and eat out of dog bowls I, to fuck a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do this that. This guy is QAnon all day. This guy, this guy, this guy, his conspiracy theory is crazy. I was I, on the way here. I was talking to one of my friends, and we were talking. We were talking about something that they're building, and I was like, Well, what is your intention? And they was like, winning. This is a woman. They was like, winning. I'm like, no, that can't be your intention. That can't be your intention. Yeah. Like when you're building something, like your intention can't be to win. Your intention should be to educate. Yeah. To teach. Or a love of the art. Love of the you art. Just love but, the but, craft. But, but, but in, yeah. in this person's case, I was like, yo, your, your intention should be to educate, to teach. And what grows from that grows from that. Like yeah. the win should be when you're getting emails every week and people are telling you how much what you're doing is helping them grow. When, when you tell them what you're doing is educating them, that's the win. To your point, if all you want is power, if all you want is money, mm -hmm. that's not a good intention. Well, so if that so if that is your intention, you can build something like this that can't be sustained, yo. Exactly. And my my salute to Marvette Brito. I love Marvette Brito. Marvette Brito always tells me all the time, your talent will take you where your character can't sustain you. And I feel like that's what I've been watching over the years. Yeah. I'm watching so many of our greats get to the heights of heights yeah. and their character can't sustain where their talent is taking them. Yeah. And that's sad. But sometimes that character that they have gives them a competitive advantage to get to that height. But do you got to hurt, allegedly hurt all of these people in the process? I don't even think they're hurting them. I just think that they do not care about them they are so numb to the idea of ruining a relationship or breaking a relationship that doesn't get them to the next level. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, you've met these people. Like we've all met these people where you're just like, oh wow, you will do anything for success. You will do anything. Yeah, see, I'm not willing to do that. No, no, I'm not saying you are. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is we've met these people and you get the feeling very quickly. And some of them are incredibly charming, incredibly talented, but you're around them and you're like, 
I am a cog in this journey for yeah. you. And the uh, yeah. second I'm you don't you. need me, I'm fucking out. And once you know that, it doesn't mean you have to stop working with them. But it does. It, you, you should immediately go, am I willing to take some smoke for you? Because I know you won't do it for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you know what I mean? You. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's, there's certain things I don't want that bad. And, you know. Yeah, you want to go to bed at the end of the night. These That's people right. are addicted. That's right. In, in the, uh, the way that you love peace at your home, you know what you're doing. You're hugging a tree. You're doing all these things. Because yeah, yeah, you want yeah, yeah. peace, right? Like, you, genuinely, I believe that from you. You just want peace and calm. You can't have peace and calm if you're doing those things. Absolutely. They don't care about peace and calm. Their peace and calm is conquer, power, greed. All these politicians are like that too. They're all the same. They're all, all the fucking same, man. But it's a huge competitive advantage. Imagine you didn't have to care about the people you fucked over. Imagine like it felt like nothing to you. We were talking to the CIA operative who, who basically was like, one of the things the CIA looks for is people who have a lack of guilt or empathy. They have a, a close to borderline personality disorder. They don't have the full thing because then you can't operate as a human being. But when you're close to it, now you can go engage with somebody and you can actually bring them on as an asset because you can lie to them. You can do anything you need to get them to like you and then take whatever information you want from them and maybe even flip them to be part of our side. Mm -hmm. They're seeking out people with these personality types. Mm -hmm. Those people with those personality types also succeed in business all the time. You compartmentalize in your brain too, that's the trick. And, and some people right. don't even need to, Chris, compartmentalize. It literally doesn't even, if they don't It's all one. Exactly, yeah. they don't feel it. So y'all think that you, you, you cannot get to certain levels without being a good person? Like you think that's impossible? No, 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 no. I think no, you're no. being a good person. Yeah. But I don't believe that. I've spoken to people that said that, that if people I respect that said Diddy was always there for them, showed up to everything. And he was one of those dudes that always showed up, right? Like literally you ask him to come for the, to the smallest thing, he would fucking go there. And then one day he might, he'd never ask for anything. One day he might ask for something and you're like, I gotta do it because this guy's always here. That's from people I respect, they said that. You know? um, I think just because somebody does something good for you doesn't mean that they're good for you. But the thing I keep talking about as a, as a, as a man and, and, you know, just humans, period, women need to listen to this too. Mm. You can't run from yourself. So if you got these, like, vices, if you got, you know, these, um, these, 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 these things that you're addicted to, whether they're sex, whether they're drugs, you know, whether it's power, Word. whether it's money, whatever it is, that shit will ultimately consume you. I ain't seen nobody win that race yet. No, because there is no end to the power, Sharla. There's no end to it. And when these people are incredibly addicted to it, and not even addicted to it, it's like the only thing that they can thrive on. We're still inspired by them. Like they're the things that they achieve. Well, we don't know none of this shit either. Exactly. That's the other thing. Like we just every see achievement. That's right. Like we're acting like we knew what Bill Cosby Bro, Steve was into. Jobs, we didn't know what these people were into. Steve Jobs is probably an asshole, dude. Like by all accounts, he said some fucking horrible things to mm -hmm. people. But he also was really inspiring to the people he worked with. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had a little bit of that. I don't exactly know. My point is you oftentimes see this, a lot of times you see it with politicians. People who are going after positions where they are able to to wield power. And um, it's really weird for us because we look at it and we're like, wow, why would you sacrifice your peace? Why would you sacrifice your character yeah, just yeah, to yeah, get yeah. that? Because character's important to us. It ain't to them, power is. Bro, you know why character's so important to me? Because that's all I ever fucking had. Huh? I, didn't, I, I didn't have money for 30, 40 years like yeah. some of these people, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm raised on a dirt road in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Like, all you had was character. You, you, my grandmother telling me, manners will take you where money won't. Like, you know, you got to be a nice person. You got to laugh. You got to joke. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, uh, you can, you know, all of us get to a point where we might, I don't know, become a bully of sorts, especially with the jokes, right? Because if we've been getting picked on so much, Sometimes you flip and that happens. Jokes are different, though. I, I, to a certain extent. It, I, I'm only saying that from There's the point. There's six guys chained up in a basement with <laughs> dog bowls. So why are you making fun of this? And ball gags in their so why mouth. Why you making fun of Waiting to fuck. <laughs> Nobody even knows they're down there. Someone got a knock on the door. Diddy's not in the country. <laughs> He's in Antigua right now. There are six guys in each one of his homes. Downstairs in a basement with a oh special security God. lock. Only Diddy's tongue, his tongue, can open it. Okay? And when he goes in there, there 
there are empty dog bowls, six men with blue chew hard dicks, oh ready to God. fuck. Damn. And if they don't empty those balls, they're gonna start fucking each other. Is that what you want? <laughs> is that what you want? Depends what day it is. <laughs> when you getting sex on demand in that way, you probably do want to see them fuck each other on Thursday. What are you talking about, Taylor? <laughs> Taylor, what don't you understand about that perfectly logical statement that this man just said? What don't you understand about how logical that was, okay? You're going to walk the fuck like he didn't make perfect yeah. goddamn sense. I just hate, you know, what, what I really hate is how we... What, I, when half a dozen guys with hard dicks are downstairs in a basement with dog balls uh, chained to a fucking wall, looking at each other <laughs> and ready to fuck the shit out of each other? All I'm simply saying is we act like these things are so one dimensional and they're not. <laughs> what do you mean? They're just simply not. Like, it, like, like if, if, and I guess because it's easy to make jokes because we don't know these people like that. You know, I mean, I've interviewed them all several times. But if this was somebody you actually knew, yeah, you would see how three dimensional these situations are. You wouldn't just be saying like, oh, that person did it, or you know, oh, you wouldn't be so quick to make the joke. You'd be disappointed. I mean. You'd yes. be disappointed. And that's how I feel in all of these situations. I'm constantly disappointed. Like, how does this always happen to our icons? How? I think you need to ask yourself a different question. What's the question? <laughs> Chris, am I tripping? <laughs> you need to ask yourself. Happened to yourself. Bill Clinton. You do what? Happened to Bill Clinton. It did not happen to Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton fucking and Barack Obama and President Biden having a goddamn uh, Cookout. thing today. They're having something today to, to raise money or something for Joe Biden. There's, there's nothing happened to Bill Clinton. They're hanging out. They're Bill Clinton is fine. What do you mean did it he? to Clinton? In did my he? eyes. In my eyes. Okay, tell me, Chris. Explain. I'm disappointed in Clinton. Uh, Why? We're getting ahead? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You see what you say? That's you. That's what you say. Shout out to Taylor. You know what I mean? Now, what if somebody said for fucking guys? For fucking guys? You for fucking for having, having guys fuck six you, guys chained you, up in a basement? <laughs> talk balls? Right? I'm just saying. You're eating a puppy chow full to the brim. You see but you know saying? that's the last meal. But, but time out. But that was that's emotion, right? Chris yeah. is disappointed. Let's Taylor. Was like what the why? What the fuck? Let's you know talk what about I'm the saying? facts. I'm Let's trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out why. I'm trying to figure out who's biting dick first when that Purina puppy chow is gone. Because you know when the Purina puppy chow is gone, you gonna want a bone. And there's five other bones Yo, Purina in that room. Yo, Purina puppy chow is crazy. What? Puppy chow? <laughs> oh my god! No! Don't you dare! Don't you dare! He got his own puppy chow. Purina puppy chow. Yo, you gotta give me that. I'm not. Get <laughs> away! You gotta give me that, bro. This guy that was is incredible. Crazy. The Purina you puppy made chow. You boy fun before. You this still guy is insane. Boat, no, the Purina <laughs> puppy <laughs> chow was filled to the brim, but they're slowly eating it. They're trying to ration it out because they know once they're done, we're gnawing on bone. <laughs> we're gnawing on. <laughs> Chris, bone. tell me about Bill Clinton. Though. What do you? What, why? Yeah, what, what were you disappointed by? I, I was referring more to the Larry Epstein. Larry! I'm joking. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy's name? Jeffrey. Jeffrey Epstein. Why are we? Oh, look, how quick we forget. <laughs> how quick we forget about I just know it's Epstein. Say I never remember the first names. I, I know Epstein and Sandusky. Oh, so you mean that he was on the plane, but wasn't there a perfectly logical explanation? And there might be, but I think across the board, I thought he was a very talented uh, politician. I agreed with a lot of his policies. I think he's undercut his legacy. Who, who? Mm. Clinton. Bill Completely. Clinton. Yeah. Don't nobody give a fuck. Yo, that's right, because Taylor just remember no, your they don't. suck. People care. Bill Clinton is doing an event. To, nobody, like, Bill Clinton is still out there campaigning for Biden. No, like, but nobody. he should be an elder statesman. He, he is. Be. It's not. His the legacy media, is tarnished. The, the media will never do that to Bill Clinton. No, but the, his Democrats, legacy is tarnished. We got to own it. He, he fucked up. Yeah. I'm, what did he do, though? <laughs> cheat Remains to be seen. He cheated on his wife. He did do that. No. <laughs> That's no, what Taylor York didn't notice. <laughs> we're, t we're unpacking this. Can you let us unpack, Taylor? No, just let us unpack. Jesus Christ. New York right. is what? What is, what is what New York is? It's illegal to cheat. On your spouse. I, no, no, let's stay where we're at. Listen. <laughs> like, 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 Why are you trying to jump off? You know what I'm saying? Why are you trying to jump off? 
You know why y'all, girl? But this is the reality of the situation. What's the reality? People are just afraid to say what I'm saying, even though they know they feel like that. You think they're afraid, afraid of the rap say... of social media? Mm-hmm. Y'all so pussy. If this happens, y'all call me PC to God, nah. but they be so they be so scared of social media. No. I'm scared. No, not you. you. That's the problem with you. You, 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 need, you, you, need, you, need, you need some fear. You need to be more scared. <laughs> you, you need some You're one of those fear. psychopaths you're talking about. <laughs> you don't hear, understand what I'm saying, Alex? I understand what you're saying, but like what Schultz said, I didn't have that connection to Diddy. You had like bad boy you to the rappers. As a, as a person. Like Diddy It's not about the person. Like it's, about the, ha- it's not about the person. It's about Tell the, him the real It's the about the institution. You're not telling me the if fucking this truth. If happened to Jay-Z, I would feel hurt. Tell him. I feel like that it, would but, that, but that's my point. You got my, tell him, tell him, bro. No, stop it. But how can you not feel that way about Bad Boy? Charlamagne. Charlamagne. Like Al, before stop Al was it, a stop. nurse and before he was a bailiff, he was <laughs> a dude with a hard dick in a basement <laughs> eating Purina Puffy Chow with a chain on waiting to fuck. <laughs> waiting to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was waiting to <laughs> fuck. Okay, that's what he was waiting God, to. Man. And it's a damn shame we can't talk about it, Al. It's a damn but shame. To your, NDAs, but NDAs. to your point, Alex, I I, re, I revere Hove more than all of these guys. Okay. But I'm just talking about the institutions they built. Def Jam. Bad boy, you know, from from Fat Farm to Sean, like we've watched yep. them constantly build things that have, you know, been so influential in our culture. To so rock. It, so it's just disappointing on a lot of levels to see them in these situations. To see that they're it also is. capable of this. Allegedly. Allegedly capable. Yes, of this. It is. It's very. It's very disappointing. Okay. Yeah, I can yo, why are they trying to pull Jay Z into this, yo? That's yo, crazy you too. Keep trying to do that. How shit. Stop me? This shit. How he keep me? Trying to put Jay Z. Nah, in I don't this do that. Puffy no, was trying to do that. That right there. That that right there. We all. You got to be careful, luck. Cause you remember, yep. man, the, the energy is real, and I don't, I don't, I don't even understand the bloodthirstiness of that. Like that's to me, that's just jealousy, envy. And but you, you know, just I see didn't do that. Call of somebody no, for that's what? That's all. What I what I'm saying is I'm criticizing the people trying to pull Jay into this. But why? Like when people say things like, "Yo, you're next." Like why the fuck would you even speak that? Like what kind of evil ass human are you? I just you? trust whatever Fifty Cent posts. That's that's my thing. Whatever Fifty says, I believe. <laughs> so Fifty posted something. I'm like, whoa, this must be true. Well, Fifty hasn't said that though. He, he posted something. No, 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 no. He's he, like, he, where's Jay? No, no. He, but he's he's saying Jay is basically distancing himself from Puff. That's what those jokes are about. Like, and he put posted the meme of Jay waving, waving at Diddy, at Diddy waving away, from, waving at Diddy's playing as it goes away or some shit like that. I do think it is unfair to bring Jay into this. It's unfair. Like, why? There hasn't been any allegation about this. For all I know, no basements. He lives in an apartment in Tribeca, <laughs> so there's no place to chain up six guys with hard dicks with Purina Puffy hey, Chow. I, I keep telling y'all over and over though, this can happen to anybody. This can happen to anybody. <laughs> anybody can make allegations against you and fucking have you smeared in 2.5 seconds, especially with the internet. Think about this shit. These motherfuckers told us Diddy was on a plane to Antigua trying to get away, and he was right there in Miami minding his business. But all of y'all was reposting it. All of y'all was sharing it. I didn't do all it. of y'all was saying he's on the run. Some of y'all still think it. <laughs> Some of I y'all didn't. still haven't gotten the news that that story was fake. I didn't. I didn't That's believe all I'm it. saying. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're saying what Young Miami and... Now, that was in the court papers. I saw that today. What is that? That she was, uh, that she was delivering was. pink cocaine? What the fuck is pink cocaine? When that shit started coming in Carlos? Tusi. 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 Yeah. Tusi. yeah. What the fuck is it's, Tusi? It's basically it's Coke of, and Molly, right? Yeah. Or Coke and MDMA name, or but something? But it's so like, people make it so different that you never really know what you get. Let me ask you a question. Oh. When motherfuckers do shit like that, why don't they just kill themselves? Do they want to die slow? That's no. not death. If you're doing both. Oh, like, dude. For somebody who does drugs, if they're doing both, why not just get it together? Man, that shit ain't pure. You know it's some, fin- you know it's some nah, fucking I, Rihanna makeup in that shit, man. There might be some Rihanna makeup in there. <laughs> you know it's some goddamn Rihanna makeup in that shit. Molly and fuck. God, can you risk that at a time like this? Bro, bro people Drug are... Drug users don't care about that shit, bro. That's what I'm... So just care. They need to care. Or go fucking to rehab. Get your shit together. Yeah, this is unfair. Yeah, maybe the second option. Young, My- <laughs> Young Miami named his pink cocaine mule and did you going to call her a logo. mule? How do you feel about that? Mules got to be mad offended. If I was a mule, <laughs> I'd be so pissed off. Like, <laughs> well, mules ain't never did a drug in their life. 
<laughs> Nor did they transport it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody ever really used the mule to fucking push no drugs. So how come now? Why is the mule that shit? <laughs> what do they call? What do they call the the guys in the basement? You know, you know what they should call. <laughs> you know what they should call people who what? cheeks. There's been more drugs put in the cheeks of people than there has can been I, on mules. Can I ask you a question? That does really answer the question, how much would you pay to get something put up your ass, whatever. There are people that are hiding drugs up their ass. Yes. So that means they are inserting things in their asshole. Yeah. F to make what type of profit? What are we talking about? There? I don't know, bro. Cracking uh, the crack is crazy. It is. <laughs> it's insane. And then you're doing it. You're doing I that drug. I understand that because I don't have that kind of ass. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, because I've seen, like, I've, I've, I've heard and been around people who like stick stuff in their vagina real quick and stick something up their butt. I'm like, how the fuck can you just stick something up your butt that? You need to be warmed up. The butt is the huh? You around these I people? I sell crack. I've seen people swallow shit, shit it back out. What? Yeah, that's very oh, yeah, common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you? Um, and they just wait for that. Yeah, you gotta wait for Maybe it. You put it in a balloon. Yeah. yeah. You put it in plastic, yeah. Oh but wait, have you ever, have you, have, but you've never been in a situation where you had to like hide the drugs and you swallow Nah, it? I go to jail. I ain't got that kind of ass. What about, so you can't boof anything? Oh, swallow it? Nah, I never did what about that either. you have toilet paper I, in your ass? Do you no, pull it out? I, I never wanted to swallow anything either because I always heard stories of people dying. Yeah. Oh, because it broke. Yeah, tire. I never wanted to do that. Never. I was, I'm surprised it didn't have more girls than guys. What do you mean? Because we have two holes, so... Girls do that shit all the time. I know, but... This, Yo, girl, girl, girls, are re, girls are usually the mules. Every once in a while. Like, oh, yeah. They... She says some genius shit. It doesn't make sense to hire a male drug mule if you're sticking the drugs in your orifice. They have an asshole and a vagina. You're getting two for one with the women. More drugs. Yeah, that is a yeah, brilliant... Yeah, yeah. Like, so there's a gender pay gap within the drug mule community <laughs> that is yeah, yeah. favoriting <laughs> women and that this needs to be demolished. We need to go down with the matriarchy. We need to stop this. It's disgusting. Uh, it's disgusting. Listen, man, all I'm simply saying is, because uh, I know all of y'all want to take this out of context, I'm not, all I'm simply saying is this is very disappointing to see another black icon in a situation like this. I don't if, think that. If y'all yeah. can't, if y'all don't understand that, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I, I don't think that that's a, a take that, that is, should be met with so much pushback. It will be for it, me. It, it was, really? Though. It always it is. Are, it already was. They were mad at you guys. For what? Breakfast club. Because they thought you were standing up for dinner. I mean, what would you, what would you rather that he that he's happy this happened? We should all be yeah, sad. Yeah, these this motherfuckers happened. is crazy as fuck and they bloodthirsty until it's somebody that inspires them. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you don't give a fuck about these people, I understand. Like you know, by all means, shoot. But for me, uh, yeah. as a person who has made a complete living off hip hop, to watch three yo, these do you understand that there was a time when Russell Simmons, Diddy, and I believe it was Master P were all on like the Source magazine together mm. as like. Hip hop's biggest mold, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, like these are cultural icons we talking about that, have, like I said before, have contributed so much. If it's not disappointing to watch that, you're crazy. And if you claim to be a person that's been doing work on yourself, like you've been going to therapy, like to see people not be able to get out of their own way, allegedly, Stuff. to see people doing things that are uh, 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 that have, that self-inflicted things that are causing their legacies to crumble, allegedly, that shit hurts. Yeah. That shit is disappointing to see. It it's like, man, yo, once again, character, your talent will take you or your character can't sustain you. If, if if all of this shit is true, it is so sad and so disappointing on so many levels. It's sad and disappointing that they were hurting people and it's sad and disappointing that, you know, legacies were ruined in the process. Now, is this a situation like R. Kelly where we now have to stop listening to Diddy's music if he gets convicted in charge of something? Oh, no. Who, who stopped listening to R. Kelly's music? Y'all exactly. motherfuckers still listen to R. Kelly's exactly. music? Exactly. still listen to R. Kelly. Who said that? Get off the internet, Alex. I mean, get, uh, this, I get, believe get I could fly. No, who stopped listening to R. Kelly's music? I know this is not the first time y'all heard that. I believe I, I could not. touch the sky. There was a lot of people that stopped listening you know, you, to R. You, Kelly you, once he was convicted. But they don't even realize no. that R. Kelly wrote so much stuff. That I know, I'm just saying. You want to know the difference between R. Kelly and all these situations? What? The fact that we saw it. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. That's why people have such definitive opinions about R. Kelly. That's why people can say without a shadow of a doubt, I'm cutting that off because they saw it. Right now it's just allegations. That's my that's the difference. There was a there was a tape that people saw. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there was a, there was proof that him and Aaliyah did get married. That is the difference. 
between yeah. his situation and these other situations. They have Crazy. alleged audio for his Meek Mill and then. You, you, man, get come off on the with all that. you gotta get off the internet. The fact that you even repeat that, that's what I'm saying. Like it, the <laughs> fact that she even repeated that lets me know what's the problem. It's is. crazy. Get you off the goddamn that? internet. Nah, I didn't crazy. hear it. You didn't hear it? it? No, I don't Come know on, yo. Know. You're just finding I've been jerking off to that for like years, <laughs> yo. Yeah. Let's pay some bills. Give me some goddamn pads, man. Give me some goddamn pads, man. What the fuck, man? Give me some goddamn ads, Taylor. This is I believe this guy is I a can mad fly. Man. Yeah. I believe I can All right, let's take a break to talk about Policy Genius, man. Salute to Policy Genius. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Policy Genius is licensed award-winning agents and technology that makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it may not, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash idiots or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash idiots. You want to do Rocket Money Show? Yes, sir. Did you know nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about? Now, before I started using Rocket Money, I thought I had about maybe like five uh, subscriptions, maybe 10, who knows? I could not believe how many things that I was paying for that I had just forgotten about. Sometimes they're charging you every month. Sometimes they're charging you every six months, every year. You just do it years ago. And since it's not the biggest number, you kind of block it out, you forget about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, it's never ending. Thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about, okay? If you're using those, Keep them. If you're not using it, why are you spending the money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app. It finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings, okay? It is very important that with Rocket Money, you get the full control over the subscriptions that are in your life and a clear view of what your expenses are. Now, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place and if I see something I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month, so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill. Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with the customer service to everything. This is a no-brainer, guys. Rocket Money has over five million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That is rocketmoney.com slash idiots, rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. We got any church announcements, Shote? Yes, sir. I'm got, coming back to Abu Dhabi, baby. Hey, when? I might come. Yo, for real? Yeah, when? May 22nd. I might come. Dude, yeah, they got comedy week Dhabi. there. There's a bunch of shows there. That, dude, let's do it, 100%. So we're going back out. Uh, shout out to the Towels. We're coming back for y'all. The Chamakis, we're coming back for y'all. And uh, I cannot wait. It's going to be great. May Life 22nd. Tour. I love Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi's incredible. Man, I had such a ball in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, let's day. run it up. Let's might, run it up. I might fuck with that. May 22nd. So yeah, and then uh, obviously, uh, theadreshows.com for all the other cities. We got uh, coming up, we got Nashville. We had another show in Charlotte. Austin, and uh, I think Houston, and uh, many more at theadreshows.com. We had a fourth show in Vancouver, so thank you so much, Vancouver, for all the love. And uh, go check out the website and grab tickets for the cities. Peace. Um, my church announcements. My Black Country by Alice Randall, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future. Okay, that'll be out April 9th, right? How many days away is that? That's right around the corner. Yeah, that's right around the corner. So salute to Alice Randall. 
Uh, Beyonce's album is coming out Friday, too. I told y'all to pre-order Alice Randall's book before Beyonce's album came out, but Beyonce's album came out before the book, so I need y'all to go back, okay, and uh, go get Alice Randall when it drops so you know what the fuck you're talking about in regards to country music. My book comes out May 21st, my third book. Hey. Be Honest or Die Line, Why Small Talk Sucks. Uh, my book is just simply about how we make so many micros, macros. So I'm really just giving y'all some bigger things to talk about. And look, I'm not an expert at anything. I'm just telling y'all some of my experiences. And you know, I'm talking about everything in the book from politics to, you know, being a father, being a girl dad, you know, uh, being a better husband, um, mental health, of course. And I just want people to read the chapters of these book and just continue the discussion. I love it. I literally, I literally end every chapter saying, let's discuss. You know what I'm saying? I like so, this. So, so I hope that, you know, you know, we just pick this book up and realize why small talk sucks, man. Like I said, it ain't even about just folks coming up to you, you know, with, with, with chit chatter and trying to make conversation. It's just about how we talk about small things way too often. Love. That shit is not going to benefit us in the future. And want to remind y'all, April 27th, Atlanta, Georgia, Pullman Yards, yes. the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening. We got Wallow and Gilly on that podcast stage. We got uh, the Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex on that podcast stage. We got uh, Horrible Decisions on that podcast stage. Debbie Brown with Deeply Well is going to be on that stage. Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money. The Baller Alert Show. Jess Hilarious will be on that stage with Carefully Reckless. Um, we got some great panels for you, man. We have a... a how to Make Money in Podcasting and Build Brand panel with uh, the good brother John Hope Bryant, uh, Denise Bennett, Damon John, Ashana Ayers, and Will Lucas will be on that panel. So go get your tickets right now, eventbrite.com, rblackeffect.com, slash podcast festival. All the VIP is sold out. Thank you for that. Um, go get the rest of those tickets, man. We'll see you April 27th in ATL, shorty. Now let's get back to the show. Yes, um, sir. Hezzy, yes, sir. Candace Owens was on the breakfast club people uh are people upset at you no nah, i mean it's like anything else it's the rule of 10 i tell y'all about the rule of 10 all the time three people gonna like it three people not gonna like it four people gonna be on the fence four people not even gonna give a fuck yeah like four yep. people don't even care yeah that's you fair. know and that's just what this was you know um i think a lot of people were surprised to see candace audience candace owens had a huge audience mm -hmm. but this is why i be trying to tell people get out your bubble that's the thing. You got your echo chamber and pay attention to what's going on. To what's going on because yeah. this is what I be doing, right? Um, the main reason I like to have these kind of conversations is because when I see people attracted to somebody, I want to know what's the appeal. Because I'm all about communication and I'm all about messaging. What is that person communicating? What is that person messaging that may be resonating with people for her to build the kind of audience? And what do you think it is with Candace? Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things, but I think the main thing, and I could be totally wrong about this, I really think the main thing was her black liberation strategy. Talk to me. Her black liberation strategy started years ago, um, which was Blexit. And Blexit was a black exit. It was a black exit, you know, uh, of black people from the Democratic Party. Now, if you didn't pay attention to Candace, you would think that Candace was telling people lead the Democratic Party and go be Republican. That's not what she's saying, even though those, that's, those are her views and her values. Her, uh, what she's saying is just exit the Democratic Party and just stop being beholden to them for no reason, right? Stop being beholden to them for no reason. Start voting your interests. Start paying attention to what everybody is doing all across the board. That was six, seven years ago when she started that. Now, if you look six, seven years ago and you think that you fast forward to 2024, what is everybody saying now? Similar. Look at that. These motherfuckers scared to say the they, they saying the same shit, Alex. Similar. It's not similar. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact thing. What is she saying that we're not saying now? No, I said it's a similar thing. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. I so think, she looks like yeah. she was ahead of the curve. You know yes. what else she's been saying for the past month? What? We need to look into the Diddy, <laughs> Diddy shit because he allegedly might be the black uh, Epstein. Yeah, she's also been saying that... Uh, this is He's, he's going to take the fall for a larger ring right. and all this. And I don't know if any of that is true. I'm just saying when she said this on Breakfast Club last week and she's been saying it for the past month, when the feds raid the house, once again, 
She looks like she knew what the fuck she was talking about. That's all it takes for people, yo. Yeah. That's all it takes for people. People are in dire need to believe in something. They're in dire need to believe in somebody. Mm. So if you can give them one thing or two things that they can hang their hat on and like, that sounds right. And then it kind of starts moving in that direction. You're like, ooh, that person knew what the She's fuck they was talking something. about. She's yeah. on to something. Let me, let me listen more. You know, yeah. so I think that's what she did. I, I, even when I see her on these college campuses and, you know, she's talking to all of these college kids, that's what these college kids are coming there for because she's giving them a black liberation strategy. I think I think there's definitely part of that. Mm -hmm. I think that I think part of it is also like there's always going to be an audience for somebody telling you that you're not racist when that's true. the world that's true. is telling you that you are. That's that's the other part of it. You're right. So Absolutely. so and and so for example, like that's if, the white part of it. Of course. What so, I was speaking to was the black to the people. black part. You're speaking to the white part. Yeah. That's and like so if you're a white person that is told like, hey, even if you're not racist, you are. You are without even realizing it because the white patriarchy has built this yeah, racism yeah, 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 yeah. systemically into this society. So you're just racist. And then when you have a black woman come out and be like, no, we, it's not racist. We don't have a racist country. All these things are not racist. I'm sure there's... You're not crazy for thinking what you're thinking. Yes. Regardless of what it is, like, you know, regardless of what the case is or anything, you're not crazy for thinking what you're thinking. So there will always be an audience that is willing to uh, accept and act, not even only willing, like excited to hear that rhetoric. Now, that's not to say that she hasn't said certain things that are potentially cuckoo. Right, of like, course, but that's the other aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The conspiracy theorist angle. I, I mean, was talking yeah. to Vlad yesterday. Salute to Vlad. And me and Vlad was talking about just in general what is driving the internet right now, especially YouTube. Conspiracy theorist shit. Oh yeah. People love those shit, those videos that you don't even know who made them. They put the spooky music behind them and put things in black and white. Because they don't exist on traditional media. That's right. traditional media won't play them, so that's, that's right. the only place for them. So if you are into that stuff, the only place you can go get them is YouTube. Why was Alex Jones so big? Huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Love Rogan to death. Why is Rogan so big? Yeah. Not, not, that's, that's not the only reason. Well, but no, he, I he, think he brings a lot of those people on. And I think, I think that he questions a, right. the traditional narrative that's a lot. Right. That's so right. uh, yeah, of course. There's a place where it's like, oh That's wow, right. I can get this, I can get this information, or we can dive into this and figure out what's exactly right. going on here. And I think that that's a failure of mainstream media. The mainstream media has probably hidden certain things that they didn't need to hide, and that has led to conspiracy theories that now look like they make sense or a little bit justified. When in reality, the truth wasn't that interesting. It never was that interesting. But you hid the truth. That's right. Which created this insane conspiracy. Everybody has to believe something else is going on. It can't be so More cut excited. and dry as the media is telling us. So let's, we, let's talk about all those things. You talk about <clears throat> the black liberation, the fact you say things that make white people feel less crazy about, you know, things they may be thinking. Yeah. The conspiracy theorist aspect of it all, right? Yeah. And the packaging, Right. I mean, she's a great communicator. That's she's a great very, communicator. She's brave. And the packaging. She's so, very so, brave. So when you take all of those things and put them in a pot, and then you take the thing that really makes it go, the people who don't like her. Because what y'all don't understand, I say this to y'all all the time, when you don't like something, for whatever reason, you spend more time talking about that thing you don't like than the stuff, the stuff you actually do. I asked quite a few people this weekend, I watched y'all post so much about Candace Owens and what y'all didn't like and about the Breakfast Club interview. How much did you talk about your own shit? How much did you even talk about something you actually like? You got a podcast. You got a podcast. I saw you talk more about Candace Owens and what she's doing than I saw you speak about your own stuff. I have a simple question. How come we don't talk about what we like as much as we talk about the things we don't? When you take all of those things, when you take all of those reasons that people like her on top of all of these people, you know, speaking negative about her and you put it all together, all you create is just big ass tsunami and the algorithm don't know the difference. They don't. <laughs>
the algorithm don't know the difference. Yeah. I think th- th- like this weekend she was like the number one search thing on Google, like top top three or some shit wow. like that. Wow. You know what I mean? People were telling me that they were going to their laptops and it was just videos of her popping up on YouTube because so many people talking about her, searching about her, stuff yeah. like that. And I mean, a lot of things happen. She, she did Breakfast Club. Then she got fired. She got fired. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, she, it was a big weekend. It was a big weekend, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, I keep telling y'all, we fuel things with our hate more than we do with our love. 100%. I don't know why we do it. It's just the way human beings are wired. We will spend all day talking about some shit we don't like <laughs> as opposed to talking about some shit that we do. Facts. It's true. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't be allowed to criticize somebody. Of you course should you should be allowed yeah, to criticize absolutely. somebody. I mean, that's what Candace does. 100%. She's being critical of people, so she can't go out there and be like, hey, I'm allowed to criticize people and I'm 100%. allowed to criticize ideas, but nobody's allowed to disagree with me 100%. She's actually doing the opposite. No, she, I know. She's like, let's debate. Let's that's right. Let me show up. That's the other thing I keep telling people. Hey, man, you don't like how the Breakfast Club interviewed Candace Owens? Cool. Have her on your platform. Stop being pussy. Stop being a they sucker. They don't want it. Because you, you're platforming her anyway. If you they talk, don't want if it. If you're talking about her, That's the other if, thing. If, if you're posting her stuff on your social media just to <sighs> shit on it, yep. you're still platforming her. That's the other so thing. So you might as well have her on and challenge her rhetoric. Challenge exactly. the things that she's saying. Tell her what you don't like about her. Don't, don't criticize us. I, I agree with that. And, if, and, and don't, and, and this is the other thing. There's so many people saying things like, you shouldn't platform, you shouldn't platform up, but then they ask it for debates. What, 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 are, we, what are we doing? Well, that's that's the thing. <laughs> you bring up a really good point, which is like, if you're going to talk about a person on your podcast, you're platforming them as well. If you're posting them on your social media, even if it's to shit on them, you're still you're platforming. platforming them. So if you're somebody who, who reaches out to you privately and goes, man, I just don't even talk about her. I don't platform her. It's just not my I thing. I respect it. That's fine. But if you're just going to go shit on her all day and then <laughs> criticize other platforms for having her that's on, right. come on now. That's right. Yeah. Come on. If now I, that's my approach. Like I'll openly say I don't really care for Candace Owens. And so I do not pay attention to anything. I don't follow her. I don't repost anything. That's I don't what you even do when you really don't care for something. Yeah, yeah it's true. True. That, that, when true. you really don't care for something, that's what you do. Yeah. But the people who say they don't care and then they post it about them nonstop, it's like, eh. Are they, are, they, are, are they just want the attention? Yeah. Or they want the views. Are they want the views? That's fair yeah. Are they just want the attention? They just want the views. That's, that's literally, they, they, you can't sit here and tell me shit like, uh, you know, don't platform her, don't platform her, but then you spend days platforming her. Because yeah. once again, if you're talking about her on your platform, if you're posting her on your platform, just to even, just to shit on her, yeah. you're still platforming her. Yeah. So why not... Have the debate with a challenger. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's 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 my take on it. Yeah. What else we got, Taylor Gang? What is this? Ed Sheeran tried to silence a Nigerian mother. Oh yeah, Jesus! I just recently, do you see it? No, but what a title. I <laughs> know. I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued. What is this? Hey, I don't know where he was at to solve it. Wait, <laughs> why can't he mom. tell her to shut up though? Ed ain't tell no Nigerian mom to shut. That's not even he Ed's character. He didn't say he'd shut up, but. That's, Ed don't, don't even get down quiet. like that. What were they Where's doing? The, um, volume. Let me hear this. I, I don't know if I buy this. Ed Sheeran tells Dins. What is that? What does that say? Ed Sheeran tells somebody mom to shut. The Nigerian mom to shut. No, but it was a, a, a thing at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I should be quiet. Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck breathing like they just ate a 12 pack of Krispy Kreme? Was that, was that English or Latin? Hello? Hello? No, it's, it's, it didn't mean it like that. It just said it in Nigerian. It didn't mean it in that. It just said like, wait, what did you say? I just said the fire. I just said, you know. You're saying it again? Yeah, I do. No, that's This is a superstar. This is very disrespectful. Do you know what you just said? I should be, I should shush my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Superstar Oh, this is just a sketch. Oh my god, mom. This is a problem. Superstar, tell you guys should be quiet. This is a problem. First of all, Ed is Ed is one of the most well mannered people you ever gonna be in your life. I'm like Ed Ed would Ed would never do no shit like that. Never. No. No, and no, and no Nigerian son is going to tell his Nigerian mom this is a superstar. Like, no, fuck no. You're gonna respect my mama. I don't care who the fuck you are. It's not even a real door. 
It's not even a real door. <laughs> they use a fake door. Oh, God. Come on, Taylor. Uh, you got to know this shit. Beyonce country track list. Anybody on there good? Anybody on there good? Did they, say, did they put you features? Put Dolly, no. But you see Dolly P right here. Hey. Oh, that's the name of a song. She got a song called Dolly P and a song called Willie Nelson. Uh, a couple of songs named after country singers. I think. Unless these, unless those are features. That can't be features, right? I don't think they were just Who's the black country? She don't have no songs named after black country singers? She right here. Does she have any songs named after black country singers? I don't know. We don't know. She just put that out. You know, I know Dolly Parton and Willie Nelson are white. Oh, God. Go, go to another topic, Taylor. I, you know, sometimes, man. <laughs> why are you mad? Sometimes I just, just understand. Sometimes I understand why walls please. need to be built. Show me. You said. <laughs> Get Beyonce's track list, so that's what I did. Yes, you did. Oh, let's play it. Now, this was good. Megan Fox. Now, let's talk about the logic that I heard Megan Fox. <laughs> the logic that I heard Megan Fox right, put hear. out to the game. Let's hear it. Megan hear. Fox slams critics over her drinking a few drops of MGK's blood. What's so gross about what I did with my soulmate when you let strangers come in your mouth? I need play to it. see that. Oh, play shit. it, Taylor. Everything is a matter of, like, what you're accustomed to mm -hmm. or what is currently like socially acceptable or normal. And back in like the fifties, even mm -hmm. how many times did you see like, probably never, but like on leave it to beaver or like movies from back then, or even the eighties, oh how many times did you see like little boys would go out with like their little pop guns and they would cut their fingers and like be blood brothers. Right. And they're like, we're best friends forever now. And they would like smush the blood together on their fingers. Uh huh. That's not satanic, right? That's normal and that's cute. That's sweet. That's like an innocent, like a little bond. Yeah, it's a little mm -hmm. bond between kids who love each other. They have a pure friendship. It's like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except instead of rubbing your fingers together, the drop of blood <laughs> goes in your mouth. And I don't know what, why that becomes satanic. I understand people are like, hey, that's weird. Okay. Weird, but guess what I think is weird? I think it's weird that girls are out here letting guys in their mouth and they don't know these guys. You're letting somebody put their sperm in your mouth and you don't know what he does. He doesn't even have a job. You met him on fucking Tinder. He's an entrepreneur or whatever. He's in a startup. And you just let him <laughs> sperm in your mouth. That's disgusting. That makes my back hurt. That makes me sweaty. So fuck you. You're so offended that I got a drop of Machine Gun Kelly's blood in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you have Brandon from Silicon Valley s s sperm in your mouth. He didn't even buy you a nice drink. <laughs> All I heard was logic, bro. Yo. All I heard was logic, bro. That was good. That was I good. mean, goddamn. You, I mean, what would you rather, Charla? What you mean? Drink come? a drop of my soulmate's blood or come from a stranger? Yeah. It's no brainer. A drop from my soulmate. Yeah. Like that's like that's logic. Yeah, I think she's making good logic. She make there. good points. I'll be acting like I'm so nasty because I drink a drop of my uh soulmate's blood. Now, can you say that's strange? Sure. Yeah. But but have you ever swallowed the cum of a stranger, ma'am? Or sir? No. Okay. No, I haven't. Point out, me. <laughs> but here's the thing, she is kind of shaming women that do that, and we've all really enjoyed the women that no, do that no, throughout no, our lives. I don't lives. think it's shame at all. She's just saying you shouldn't have anything to say about me right. because your tongue ain't clean. True, but she also said that it makes her back sweaty and it makes her chest hurt. The fact that girls are sucking guys' dicks and swallowing their sperm when they just met them if they work for Silicon Valley startups. I respect that's true. She's saying don't be such a fucking hoe. But it's also like, yo, stop hating. Like I get it, <laughs> but stop yeah. hating. Stop hating. I get it. Of course, we you know, we don't want uh our children to do that. Taylor, you're a woman on Thursday. <laughs> you know? What do you think about this? <laughs> you know I'm a woman on Thursdays. I'm a woman every day. Thank what do you, you think about much. swallowing the cum of strangers? Would you rather do blood of your soulmate or the cum of a stranger? Blood of my soulmate. There but you go. I actually think that, though, that <laughs> these girls are sucking dick like they're all strangers. But with their boyfriend. Well, there's a lot of girls. You suck some strange dick. Come on. No, I haven't. You've I never given a blowjob to a guy you just met? See what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't even, God won't even let you lie. 
<laughs> you see that what I'm saying? Why would you do it? Why well, I don't understand y'all? Why? What is the point of lying? First of all. What is the point of lying? First of all. What is the point of lying? First of all. <laughs> I love a first Taylor, of all. the camera was on I you. Love a first Everybody of saw your reaction. I love We're not going to edit first it. Of all. Everybody's going to see Taylor <laughs> Hayes in action trying to lie and can't even hold the lie. Okay? I'm not a, I'm not a liar though. I always tell the truth. All I'm going to say is though um not of like a stranger's like he wasn't a stranger where he came in me. No. But he nutted, and then you spit it out. No, I'm saying, like, I've never sucked a dick where he's a stranger. If that makes sense. I don't get it. How I don't she, understand. How she's she trying to make said. it seem like, or how she said, like, you know, you met him on Tinder. Like, that's never happened to me. So how did it happen with this guy? Not met yet, him on vacation. Your business. Met him on vacation. Not your business. Met him on vacation. Wow. Pool boy. Yeah, Pool nigga. Boy. We know what the fuck be going on, Taylor. You was what on happened? vacation, okay? You was on vacation. You met a pool boy? You was over there in yeah. Antigua, okay? You was drunk. I've never was been high. to Antigua in my life. You know what I'm saying? Where, 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 where was you at? Where was you at when you Aruba. got to... Aruba. Aruba, there you go. You was in Aruba. No, I never took no one's dick in Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> Like, well, <laughs> get your island. Get your yeah. island, right? Yeah. What island did you suck some guys' dick? Let's like, just get to the bottom. No, Yo, out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it was not a ruble. Oh, I am. We got any more uh, ads, Taylor? Look at you breaking stuff. If we have any more ads, let's do an ad and then let's do some asking idiots. Um. Yeah, you do. But I mean, there's so much more stuff. What about Kendrick Lamar? Demolishing Drake. Salute to the God, Kendrick Lamar, man. Demolishing? Demolishing. I'm not going to say demolish. Wait, wait, well, yeah, I'm so confused. Was the bar, tell me the bar. I okay. didn't read the bar. Okay, okay. Great. I'm not going to say demolish. Okay, wait, wait, let's compare. Wait, wait, so I got a thing. I will say this, though. Kendrick Lamar. Got these niggas frazzled. No, you don't. Yes, wow. He oh, he Cause, don't. Because cause, cause everybody, so you know why he doesn't? I'll tell you why he doesn't. <laughs> Because everybody has made up their mind. They don't want no smoke with Kendrick. Exactly. So whenever Kendrick exactly. decides he wants to be Thank a bully, <laughs> he comes out and he bullies people. You really think it's like that? Uh, yes. Absolutely. They're no not frazzled. It, they're not man. frazzled because they're ducking the smoke. They're acting like they don't see this shit. They're acting like this shit don't exist. Come on. They don't want no problems. So let me tell y'all something think about Cole's Kendrick Lamar. Hop, I think Cole's going to pop out. No, he's not. And if he does, so what? He's, he's not. He's not. Yeah. And I love Cole. I think Cole is dope. I'm not going to say I love Cole because love is a strong word. <laughs> I like Cole. I like what he represents. He's from the Carolinas. He can rap his ass off. He's fantastic. But you think he's not fun, fucking with Kung Fu Kenny? Never. I've always been on record saying that. There's, Ken, Ken, Kendrick Lamar has Whoa. been the leader of the new school for all of these guys. I think that everybody cares. More, they care about quantity over quality. Mm -hmm. And I think being that Kendrick Lamar ain't out here jumping on every feature. He ain't out here dropping dropping an album every year because he doesn't do that <laughs> because he doesn't do that people laughing? just tend to like step back but every time he comes out he shuts shit down it's mm. critical acclaim every time you're bugging you're it's bugging. critical acclaim so every last time album did not shut shit it's, down you're a liar people barely like talked about it like yes it was you're a liar talked about for a week and then we forgot about that's it. not true not me that's not all me. i listen exactly. to not you know why the big step is album you know when's the last time you when's the last time you played it yesterday yeah exactly Mr. Morales I'm, I'm not yes, lying at all do. i'm on record i'm on i'm on record as saying in the future people are going to look at that album and say this is the most important hip hop album of all time that Mr. Morales and the Big Steppers and Jay Z 444 because when you grow up it's 50% right when you when you grow up Right? When you grow up and you start like like really becoming a man, if you're doing it right, you're gonna receive that music differently. You're gonna receive the music on 444 differently, and you're gonna receive the music on Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers differently. I got a whole chapter in my book named Father Time based off the Kendrick Lamar song. That's how much I love that album. All right. Kendrick Lamar <laughs> went on a whole album. world tour with that album. Like Kendrick Lamar got nominated for mad Grammys. Because of that album. He won Grammys because of that album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Once again, every time Kendrick Lamar comes out, he shuts shit down. That's why I respect SZA so much. Because SZA is the same way. Give you Control album, come out five years later. You know, give you a, a SOS. What was it called? Not SOS. What was the new album called? Um, SOS, right? I think. I thought that's what the name. Not the name of the tour. Yeah. What was the name of her last album? But she comes out, she comes out with another album five years later, shut shit down. Those are real artists. Real artists do that. 
No disrespect to because these guys are real artists too. Yeah, but they're what you implying. It's cause it's, these guys are real artists too, but they constantly drop. They're constantly feeding the algorithm. So Kung what's Fu, wrong with that? Nothing. But Kung Fu Kenny ain't trying to do that. The fact that the fact that he's th that they say big three. He said fuck. And he's big only three. giving you four albums. In 12 years, what does that say about his, his he's music? He's good. Nobody says he's not good. He's a he's he's the one. <laughs> can I play this real quick? I don't, I don't, just just the comparisons, just so y'all can see how he Go ahead, play it. Master the lyrics. Okay. I don't know if we can put it on the YouTube, but oh. yeah, we won't be able to. Well, but play it anyway. Go. Yes. Kendrick says, one at a time, I line them up and bomb on their mom while she watching the kids. I'm in a destruction mode if the gold exists. I'm important like the Pope. I'm a Muslim on pork. I'm Machiavelli's offspring. I'm the king of New York, king of the coast. One hand, I juggled them both. The juggernauts all in your juggler. You take me for jokes. Live in the basement. Church pews and funeral faces. Cartier bracelets for my women friends. I'm in Vegas. Who the fuck y'all thought it's supposed to be? If Phil Jackson came back, still no coaching me. Does does that sound like somebody <laughs> who wants to play nice? Yo, why is he bombing on their moms? That's kind of crazy. He said, he said, I heard the barbershops be in great debates all the time about who's the best MC, Kendrick, Jigga, and Nas, Eminem, Andre 3000. The rest of y'all new niggas, just new niggas, don't get involved. And I ain't rocking no more designer shit. White tees and Nike Cortez. This is Red Corvettes anom Anonymous. I'm usually homeboys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with. But this is hip hop. And them niggas should know what time it is. And that goes for J. Cole, Big Crit, Wale, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Big Sean, J. Electronica, Tyler, Mac Miller. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. He said, he said this when? Nobody said 20, nothing. 2013. 2013, he laid the gauntlet down. Nobody said a goddamn thing. Jake would try to say some stuff in his lyrics. I'm back 11 years later wanting some smoke. <laughs> I'm back 11 years later wanting some more smoke. Sounds like they don't want any smoke. That's what it, clearly. Indeed. Drake has been sneak dissing. Yeah, but sneak he didn't dissing. Pop and he has been sneak dissing. No, he too. didn't. No. Ken, no, he didn't. He will Ken, say his name. Kendra said, everything. fuck the subliminals. Motherfuck the, the big, big three. Thing. It's just big me. Right. Like, stop, man. Y'all don't want it with Kung Fu Kenny. Why don't maybe, you think Maybe that... Drake feels he doesn't need to talk to anybody I, I do, beneath I him. I am interested in seeing Cole Kendrick Lamar Kendrick. is not beneath Drake. I mean, Kendrick it. Lamar got a fucking Pulitzer Prize. Kendrick Lamar got mad Grammys. Kendrick Lamar sells millions of records. Kendrick Lamar sells out tours all over the world. You, okay, there is nothing beneath you, you have to understand I think Drake, Drake, I think Drake, Drake would disagree. Drake is an easy target. Drake is an easy think, target. Think, you know but that, I just Drake. think everybody feels like Drake has been the top of the rap game for the past 10 years. But I'm saying... He hasn't. I would say, and this is the best analogy, Drake is LeBron James. He's yeah. been the most consistent mm -hmm. at a high level for a long time, but there's been a lot of people who've ate on his watch. A lot. And okay. Kendrick is one of them. Cole is one of them. Mm -hmm. They've ate on his watch. Bron's record in the finals is still what? So who would Kendrick, Four and six. Who would Kendrick be? In this era? Kobe, maybe. Yeah. Oh, God, Taylor, please. Taylor. Sorry, I'm going LeBron um, on that one. <laughs> I don't know who Kobe is. Kendrick LeBron. would be. But that's what I'm saying. If you, I, you could pretty much name anybody, and I'm going to choose LeBron's career over that. But see, I, I, Kendrick, and like, like to me, J. Cole is the Tim Duncan of rap. So he's not necessarily of this era. He's, he's what I call the big fundamental. He does everything right mm -hmm. on rap records. Mm -hmm. He's the perfect MC. He raps dope, great beats. He picks the right music. Like he's, the, he's really he's the big fundamental. Great features. Great features. He's the Tim Duncan of rap. Kendrick is not of this era to me either. I wouldn't, comp I wouldn't there's not a basketball player from this era, I would say. You don't think he's Kendrick Steph? Is. I don't think he's Steph, yo. Interesting. Maybe, but I don't know. I've just heard LeBron and the GOAT discussion a lot, but I haven't heard Tim Duncan and the GOAT discussion. Because people, no, no to, to basketball savants, absolutely. He's the greatest power forward of all time. If you're being objective, Kit, t Tim Duncan might be top five ever. Yeah, basketball player. Yeah. If you if you take your personal feelings out of it and you just look at what it is. Five rings. Five rings, mad MVPs, <laughs> defensive player of the year awards. Yeah. Like, he's that guy. 
Let's pay some bills, Taylor. The moral of the story is <laughs> they don't want it with Kendrick. They don't. Until until you somebody until argument. somebody proves me otherwise. What's the I'm just I'm just saying when you're at number one, you don't shoot at number two or three or four or five or six. Who says number like, one? Yeah, I don't know who said who thinks Kendrick is two or three. The, he, are you, are you I basing mean, off Kendrick, of the Kend, album? Kendrick could say he's number one, but are you basing off of Drake's like consistency? That's and there's a Fantastic just, Four, by the way. Y'all keep sleeping on goddamn Future. That's the other thing that gets lost in all of this. He's on a Future record, a cracking Future record, from an album that's about to sell 220,000 copies, which is going to give Future his ninth number one. It's only like five or six artists with that many number one albums, rapper-wise. It's like Jay-Z, Kanye, uh, Drake, Wayne, Eminem, Future, and somebody else I'm missing. It's only like seven people. That's all I'm saying. What bills we got, Taylor? <laughs> Drake's still number one. <laughs> no, he's not. Sis. You're over it. Stop running his dick. Damn. That's God damn. Objective. God damn. No diddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got more bills. Yeah, Yo, we, like, Taylor, what else we got? We got some bills to pay here? So. Prize picks. Salute the prize picks, man. Football season is over. Uh, but the action on the floor is just heating up, okay? We're in the middle of tournament season, okay? So whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS, okay? It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Okay, salute the prize picks, man. Download the app today and use code IDIOTS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code IDIOTS when you download the prize picks app for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Guys, this episode has also been brought to you by Hard Dangalangs. We're talking about what's allegedly in the basement and all of Diddy's cribs. You got a half of a baker's dozen of hard dick. And you know what? Allegedly, if they were smart to deliver the hardest dick in the planet, you'd, you'd be on the blue chew, man. It's the one that we rock with. It's the, really the hardest and the biggest and the longest in the business. Fast forward, okay? Blue chew breaking backs out there, okay? Got backs glazed. Extra sticky. Blue chew. You're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you go to bluechew.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. Like, why would you not do it? This is an absolute no-brainer. Lay it right. Lay it right the first time, man. They deserve it. Lay it right the last time. Lay it right all the times in the middle. Blue Chew got you. Now let's get back to the show. Mab, Mab and Lap Hakula. That's fire. <laughs> wants to know when is Andrew coming to South Africa? Yo, I need to come out to South Africa, man. Had a ball in South Africa, too. Love South I Africa. I need to come out to South, yeah. South Africa. I so, loved South Africa when I was there. Beautiful place. Salute to my girl, Bonang Matiba. Oh, yeah, Bonang. Yep, salute to my guy, uh, Mac G. Okay, Mac G. Love South Africa. Mac nah, G. I got to get out there, man. When I was in uh, Zanzibar this, uh, for the holidays, Mac G and his, 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 his wife and his people was out there from South Africa. We had a good time, man. Uh, Jose underscore OGK. How do you guys manage stress? That's a great question, man. I don't. I just be stressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just get How do you stressed. You stress yourself. You go to sleep or you just. No, I just out? get. Well, actually, I guess one thing is like uh, exercise. Like, if I'm playing paddle, there's a couple hours where I could just lock in and not think about anything I need to do. When I'm like lifting weights or something, like with a trainer, I could still think of all the shit I need to do. I don't really kind of zone out. But if it's an activity that I really like, I can kind of check out from the world. And that's, that's fantastic. I don't really have no stress, man. For real? And what I mean by that is. The things that stress me usually have to do with other people. Hmm. So if I don't let any external circumstances get in here, you're good. My head or my heart, yeah, I'm cool. 
Literally everybody, any stress that could possibly come my way has to do with some external shit. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we say things that sound good, like remember your serenity prayer, like God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, you know, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Or we say things like what other people think about me is none of my business. We don't really believe none of that shit. Nope. But you really have to. If yeah. you truly, truly believe that, I promise you your stress levels will come down tremendously. But it is you, tough. To I was I was in the doctor's office yesterday. I was actually in the dentist. You know, they do your blood pressure in the dentist. I'll get my teeth clean. And um You've never gotten your teeth clean. I um, do. They don't do my blood pressure. You've never gotten your teeth clean. Um so you get your teeth blood? clean, right? Like, what? So, so so you don't get your blood pressure taken when you get your teeth clean? That's not a thing. Yes, it is. Every single Wait, well, time. Clearly you're at a fancy dentist because that's not right way. Well, I've seen both of y'all teeth, so I understand. But listen, wow. here's, the thing. here's the thing, right? So, Excuse so, me. so they do your, they do your blood pressure. The they, they give, too, they do, your, they like do that. your blood pressure. Right? <laughs> so when they're giving me the blood pressure, right? <laughs> they give me. What's the going blood on? Blood on blood 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 blood. Blood. I didn't even say yeah. nothing. Yeah. Taylor, I didn't even say anything. Taylor, Taylor, you talking about my teeth? First of, all, first of all, I, I, I wore this. I wore, I wore this yesterday. Okay, this is Legacy of Resilience. It is a great line, a great black-owned brand. I'm glad you brought attention to it. It's very comfortable, by the way. Okay, very, very comfortable brand this is. All right, so it's Legacy of Resilience. You can go follow them on Instagram at Legacy of Resilience. Let me see why do they take your blood pressure? My point is, <laughs> what um, do they take your blood pressure yeah. with? What do you mean? Like, what's the instrument they use? The blood pressure machine. But what is it? What does it look oh, like? Oh, they wrap it, they wrap the thing around your arm. Yeah, taking your blood pressure regularly. Uh, why do dental offices take your blood pressure? It can, help, it can help your dental professional determine what type of dental anesthetic can uh, be used, if any. Have you been to a dentist before, Taylor? You ever go to a dentist? Me again. I mean, I was just asking. I, maybe y'all never paid no you attention. You have perfect Keep teeth. Trying. Why would you need to Keep go trying. to a dentist? Keep trying. Why would you need Keep to go trying. to a dentist if you got Keep perfect trying. teeth? Keep trying. You like that compliment? No. You like that compliment? Oh, yeah. It says, <laughs> yeah. In the dentist office, yeah. it says, taking your blood pressure regularly not only establishes your baseline <laughs> pressure for future monitoring, but also helps determine if you are healthy enough to undergo your scheduled procedure. In addition, it can help your dental professional determine what type of dental uh, anesthetic can be used. But he was, they did it. This is the second time this happened to me. I was on the phone. Oh, no. Texting while he's doing it. And you hear the machine go, your blood pressure is high. And he's like, damn, your blood pressure? I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, hold on. Put my phone down. Breathe a little bit. Do it again. He's like, yeah, you're fine. Wow. Because that happened to me before. I did my blood pressure and... Um, Damn, Taylor. Did you that fart? Was God, Yo, damn, Taylor. Yo. Taylor. Oh Taylor. Taylor. Was that a queef? Wow. Did you just hit a queef? It really wasn't chair. No, Stop. it wasn't. Yes, it was. Stop. Stop. Taylor. <laughs> I hate oh, it. See, oh, I, by the way, no. I don't I didn't fart in these same clothes I wore yesterday. Okay? I didn't fart either. You don't I don't want to see you in those jeans. I don't want to see you in those jeans for at least weird. a month. That's you just, went out you just farted in those jeans. No, I didn't. You did. <laughs> that was disgusting, Taylor. Ugh. Yo, you see that question, Devon, whatever? Ugh. I'm not, we're not going to ask it here, but you see that question, Devon, whatever? Yo. Bro, I was, in, I was in Atlantic City at my daughter's cheerleading competition, and me and my wife had just came from dinner because, you know, we turned those into date nights. And I was a little tipsy with some edibles in me. Got him. And bro, like four or five people ran up to me like, oh, Charlamagne, what's up, man? Yo, we get a picture, whatever. And this dude had a camera, he goes, <laughs> no, that question. no, no. I'm like, bro, if you don't get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> they put you on the spot? Yo, man, it's 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday <sighs> in Atlantic City. The fuck is wrong with you? Like, what? You gotta tell him, baby, listen, you're not being a good neighbor. <laughs> and that's why you in this mess in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it up, Ted. What else we got? What else we got? What else? Is How has working each other on this podcast... What the fuck? I was working with each other on this podcast. I was about to say, impacted God damn. your worldview. No diddy, bro. I feel like I, I know a lot more about white things now. <laughs> Just working with all you crackers. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think, um, nah, it's, it's impacted my worldview a lot. Because, I mean, we've been doing this for 11 years. Isn't it crazy? Like, we've, like we've, we've lived a decade of our lives together. It's <laughs> the best. You know what I'm saying? It's really the best. And we come in here and we just talk about all types of shit. So it's just like, yeah, it does, you know, impact your worldview. I, I, I couldn't point to anything specific, but I'm I'm 100% positive it has. Whether it's Chris, whether it's Alex, whether it's 
Well, not so much. Whether it's, you know, of course, Shady shows. again! What's up with you? I didn't even say it. What's up? What the fuck? You wasn't saying that earlier. Hmm. I didn't even say your name. What did he say earlier? <laughs> That's a point. That's the point. What did he say That's early? I didn't even That's say your point. name. That's the point. Well, how you know I'm talking about you? There's been other people on this podcast over the last 11 years whose name I didn't who want to say. In, who else? Is A lot. This? Who else is in this Dwayne. room? Dwayne. Who else is in this room? Dwayne. Nobody was in, but so, I'm just saying, I was about to say a name and I stopped. Exactly. Had nothing to do with you. <laughs> so this is so crazy, you think Taylor. the world revolve around Unbelievable. That's crazy. Un fucking believable. Yeah. What else we got? I don't even want to talk about this no more. Sit stuff. in the corner and Give me fart two in your more, pants. Taylor. Give me two good I'll ones. Just do that for the rest of the pod. You sit in that corner and you take a shit in your jeans like you did in front of us and tried to lie and blame it on the Un chair. How fucking yeah. dare you? Unbelievable. How fucking so dare annoying. you? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my God. You should change your fucking underwear. That's what you should do. <laughs> Taking a fat <laughs> shit like that in your jeans. What else we got? We answered that one already. Scroll up, Taylor. What else we got? Oh, now this, this is some shit to talk about. OVO okay. third. Let's Which go. Which president had the baddest first You know it's not even lady. a question. Donnie. Young Donald. Damn, I didn't even Donald. think about I'm that. Sorry, I forgot about her. <laughs> nah, she's not even, I mean, she's in a different league than every other one. Let's just be honest. Uh, Baron's mama. Baron's mama. Nah, I'm going Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle, who? Michelle Obama. I'm going Michelle. Man, if y'all don't get the fuck out of here, <laughs> yo. Michelle. Get the fuck Michelle. out of here. You're the best style out of all the first ladies. Well, what are we talking about and, style? And, we asking and, if you're beautiful, and, not not the clothes and, look good. And you sleeping on young Hillary. I thought we don't care about what social media says, man. You sleeping you on see, young Hillary. <laughs> yo, Hillary is a bust. You and see. Michelle is, is a beautiful woman. You sleeping on your Hillary. <laughs> she's a beautiful woman, but one. she's not fucking with Donnie T's wife. With all due respect, he got an absolute nah, nine point five Michelle. to ten. You not me. taking Michelle over Donnie T? I don't even know her name. What's I her like? Name? I mean, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me. What? Yeah, I forget about one. Who? Melania. I mean, she doesn't count necessarily as a first lady, Who? but she was a first. Who? Lady. Marilyn Monroe. Yo. Wasn't, didn't she oh, and, God, didn't she and Bill Clinton have something? Yeah. Bill Clinton. Yes, 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 oh, yes, man. yes, oh. yes. Why you don't shame her, yo? Yeah. She's right. God. Sorry. She gets I'm one sorry. right and you want shit on her? My bad. It was, Bill, it was Marilyn Monroe and the other girl. What's the other girl? Is this crazy that you, is this crazy that you, that people don't really talk about that, Taylor? That's, yo, it takes balls to talk about can, that. I'm not going Not for real, because nah, can we give Bill credit for smashing Marilyn? Because that is fire, though. Yes. If you are going to smash, <laughs> yeah, at least yeah, smash yeah. a woman who's dead. No, man. No. 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 What? Taylor is right. Nah, I know she's right. Let her be right. I know yo. she's right. Let her be right. She I know was she's dead right. already when that happened? No, she wasn't. They fucking, Taylor, he's fucking with you. Here's the thing. Nobody ever no, talked about that. You missed that. what she just said. Yeah, nobody ever. She just said. I heard She was her. dead. I heard her. Would you stop? Okay. I heard her. Okay. Taylor, they fucking with you. Because nobody ever talks about this, Taylor. Nobody ever talks about this. Nobody ever brings this up. Because it did happen. Could you stop? Could you stop? It wasn't Bill Clinton. Could you stop? My bad. Okay. My bad. It wasn't Bill Clinton. Sorry. It what? What? Sorry. Taylor, don't let them fucking back you down, no, yo. No, was it? My bad. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You know how great that would have been? We, had, we, we should have threw that out we there. We could have had 30 minutes. We could have had 30 <laughs> minutes on that shit. I mean, can you blame Bill? I knew she played. You got the I opportunity knew, to knew, dig a corpse knew, off the ground and fuck it. You're not going to take somebody, though. So give me that. I just mix the white presents around. Everyone does. What do you mix the white persons? All the presidents been white except for Barack. <laughs> you should at least know the difference between presidents. No, they're no. Really? For what? I can't believe you thought that Michelle's better looking than Melania objectively. She is, she is. She, she is. is. She is. She is. She she's is. overall, she's a black woman. Now, this, is, this is another good one. Alka Snun says, would you stop your child from making your mistakes or let them live and learn from them? I mean, it depends which mistakes. Depends which mistakes. You know, it's really sometimes that they gotta learn, but also if it's a horrible mistake, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to put your child through that. But you can't stop them, and I think that you know, if we try to stop them, we'll end up raising our kids out of fear as opposed to love. You know what I'm saying? Would I, you stop them out of love? 
Yeah. Is there a moment where you yeah. do that? You should, but, but, but everything you're saying is love, right? Like if I yeah. tell my child, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, I can only tell them. They're going to still go do whatever it is right. that they want to do regardless. So you know it's not I mean? stopping. You're advising your kid. Advising them. Got it. You know I, that what I mean? Sense. You know, so it's like, yeah. I mean, our, our parents couldn't stop us. That's true. No matter how much they tried, no, no matter true. what they attempted to do, they couldn't stop us from making whatever mistakes we made. And I think that, you know, those mistakes build character. That's, 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 that's all I want all of us to understand. Like, it's okay to say the wrong thing. Mm. It's okay to do the wrong thing mm. because you're going to be held accountable for whatever you say and whatever you do. Yeah. Like, that's why they're called mistakes. They're called mistakes for that reason. And you're supposed to learn from those mistakes. Yep. You know, and we don't allow people to learn <laughs> anymore. Like we want to be the judge, the jury, execution. the executioner. And there's so much groupthink now that everybody wants people to do exactly what it is that they're doing. And if you don't do it, you get shamed for it. You get slandered. It's like, nah. Now, speaking of shame, real quick, can mm -hmm. you read the bottom question that's clear from Taylor's burner account? Huh? What? From Am from Am Nerdy? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Just read it. Just read it. Oh, my Eventually God. Eventually, it's going to hit you. <laughs> oh, my God. Which blue color job intrigued you? <laughs> Why did I get me from color. my burner account? <laughs> I was just teasing. Which blue color job intrigues me? Probably if I had to dress up as Bluey. <laughs> if I had to dress up as Bluey for some kid's birthday party to make some extra money, I would absolutely do that. That is a nice blue color job. I mean, you're... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, now, this is not quite Bluey, but it's almost there. That's a nice blue color job. You don't think so? <laughs> yeah, you don't think so? Annoying. That's it? Let's, you want the question, to yeah, it's which blue collar. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what what's y'all think? What's the blue collar job that intrigues me the most? Mm -hmm. Is military blue collar? I would think so. I think it's a little uh, different, right? Blue collar is more uh, trade, yeah. right? Like being a carpenter or something like that. Hmm. I mean, anything where I'm like building, I think is really intriguing. Like the idea of like, actually putting together a home. I think that's awesome. You, I remember even when I used to like mow lawns and stuff, after I was finished, I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's cool, I did that. I, 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 you get to see your effort. And I think we get to do that in entertainment as well, but it's nice to see your effort. So I think it would be like building homes, creating a home for somebody is like kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Um, I think we got it, guys. You don't have one? Have one. What's your blue color job? Uh, I told you, dress up as bluey. Ugh, <laughs> what God. do you mean? Right. Uh, probably home designing. Why are you just capping off of him? I would be a con. My dad was a contractor. That's what I used to do. We used to have, my dad had a, uh, he still has a contracting business. He's older now, but that's what we used to do. We used to be contractors. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? That'd be good for you though. Andre the Outlaw. Let's end on this one. Andre the Outlaw. I don't know whether to end on this one or the next one. That's a good one. Talk to me. <laughs> Does Andrew want help with fixing his fucking ugly ass bunions? Your boy can fix it. Why you got to try to sound gangster when you say you want to touch another man's feet, bro? Just say, just say you want to help Andrew yeah, with his bunions. Yeah, Matt bunion. Salazar, my mans. Um, <laughs> yes, I do, actually. So if you have, uh, that'd be great. DM me. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to fix my bunion. I have a bunion. And also my nails are getting all dark, and it's just not good. It's playing all this paddle, guys. Wait, yeah. Yeah, my toenails. Really? You think that these, what, are just, they're not good Flat shoes? I don't know. Maybe it's just... You cut your toes? Yeah, I, I, but maybe I should just keep them a little bit more snug because I guess they're jamming a bit. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do that. Maybe I'll switch my shoe. Damn, guys, I wish I had a better answer for that last one, but... <laughs> man. I guess everybody's going to have to go back to their day now. I just saw a great quote, man. Go. A fool sees another man's downfall as a topic of discussion. A wise man sees it as a warning to himself. Mm. So I'll be trying to tell y'all. Damn, bro. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.